Hello, in the previous video, we have described the experimental setup for photoelectric effect. We have discussed how the saturation current allows us to calculate the rate of emission, while the stopping potential allows us to calculate the maximum Ke of the photoelectrons. So what kind of experiments did the physicists conduct? Now the obvious thing to do is to vary the intensity of the light beam and see how the rate of emission and the speed of emission is affected by how bright or how dim this beam of light is. Now let's think about it. Huh? So if light is really a wave, then the light energy from the light beam will be shared by all these electrons. So over time, the average Ke increase and increase and increase until eventually they are so energetic that they can break free from the metal lattice. So what happens if this light wave has a higher intensity? Higher intensity means energy is being transferred to the electrons at a higher rate. So so as illustrated by the animation, it should take a shorter amount of time before the electrons accumulate enough energy to be liberated. And not only that, more of them should be liberated per unit time, and they should also be liberated with a higher Ke. So this is our prediction. Increasing the intensity of the light should result in a faster rate of emission, faster speed of emission, and also an earlier onset of emission. This is an artist's impression of photoelectric effect. So if you use a brighter beam, more intense beam, what should happen is more photoelectrons emitted per unit time and also higher Ke max. The higher Ke max is represented by the photoelectrons being able to jump to a higher height. Okay, so what were the actual observations? The actual observations look like this. So we were right about the higher rates of emission. If you double the intensity of the light, the number of photoelectrons being liberated per unit time is indeed doubled. But notice they reach the same height as before. So apparently, even though we have more photoelectrons emitted per unit time, they are emitted with the same maximum Ke as before. On the IV graphs, it means that if this is the original IV graph, if you increase the intensity, you get a higher saturation current, meaning a higher rate of emission, but the stopping potential stays the same, which means the Ke max is unchanged. What we expected was both a higher saturation current and a higher stopping potential. But very strangely, this was not observed. Instead, this was observed. Now, what if we change the frequency? Now, according to the wave model, the rate of transfer of energy of an EM wave depends only on the intensity. So, whether it's yellow light or the higher frequency blue light, we should get the same exact emission. Same rate, same Ke max. So, what were the actual observations? Ooh, if you increase the frequency of the light, you actually get photoelectrons being liberated at a higher Ke. So on the IV graphs, it means that if this is the original one, if you increase the frequency, if you shorten the wavelength of the light beam, you actually get a higher stopping potential, which tells us that photoelectrons are now being emitted with a higher Ke max. Okay, what if we lower the frequency instead? So red light has a lower frequency, longer wavelength, yeah? Again, according to the wave model, the frequency of the light shouldn't matter as long as it's intense enough. As long as the intensity is high enough, the rate of transfer of energy should be the same. So we should get the same photoelectric emission. What's the actual observation? The actual observation was like that. Yep, like that. Nothing. It turns out there's always a frequency low enough when not a single photoelectron is liberated. So on the IV graph, you need a certain threshold frequency before you can observe photoelectric effect. If the frequency of the light is too low, then you get nothing. Now you understand why the physicists start to suspect that light is not a wave, right? But that's not all. There's one more thing. Now remember, because this beam of light is transferring energy to many, many electrons, so the energy is shared, right? So it'll take time for the average K to increase before the first emission uh, is observed. So what if we use a very low intensity beam? Then by right, it should take a very long time before the first photo emission is observed. Because we can always reduce the intensity of the beam, we believe that if it's low enough, we'll be able to observe the time lag. But physicists were never able to detect this time lag, meaning the moment you shine the light, photo emission always occur immediately, instantaneously. There was zero time lag. So here's a summary of the observations that contradict the belief that light is a wave. First, the Ke max is not affected by intensity of the light. It's only dependent on the frequency of the light used. There's also this thing called the threshold frequency below which photoelectric effects just does not occur, regardless of the intensity of the light. And the third thing is we were not able to observe any time lag, even if we are using a light beam that has very, very low intensity. 
So these are things that kept the physicists up at night, they couldn't sleep. If you do not feel the physicist's pain, it may be because you are not getting the picture yet. Maybe you are more familiar with the sound wave. So let's imagine that uh, the photoelectric effect is being caused by a sound wave instead. Maybe we call it the audio electric effect. Yeah? So imagine you are using a sound wave to try to liberate photoelectrons and nothing is coming out. Then what will you do? You increase the volume, right? So you go, oh, if nothing comes out, you go, oh, if nothing comes out, you go louder, oh, still nothing comes out, you go, oh, <clears throat> but still nothing comes out. So now you are so exhausted. Imagine the shock when you realize that what is wrong is the pitch. Because if you go, straight away you get all the electrons coming out. So why should the frequency matter? Ah, that will keep you up at night, right? All right, that's all. Ta-ta.